What's going on guys, Foresight here. We've got a lot to talk about today with a stock and crypto sell-off happening simultaneously yet again. So we're gonna talk about what caused each of the sell-offs and what we could see in the coming days from each of the markets. This is gonna be a bit new of a format for me. I'm gonna try to fit three topics in a roughly nine minute video that we typically have just time for one topic. So let me know down in the comments if you like this format a bit more. It's gonna be a bit more streamlined and a bit more fast paced. We're gonna talk about three primary topics today the Federal Reserve emergency meeting, which has ultimately caused a big sell-off in the market today. And we could see that continuing into the middle of the week, depending on what they say about the prime interest rate. We're also going to talk about Michael Saylor and micro strategies coming up on a near margin call with the Bitcoin sell-off today and how that could ultimately impact the market moving forward. And if micro strategies is not the reason for the crypto sell-off, then surely there's a bit of angst caused by the Celsius collapse. So we're going to talk about that too, because because they're one of the largest crypto lending agencies and they've come across some hard times. We're starting to see a lot of these hard times for crypto companies in the past couple of weeks. But first, we're going to talk about the Federal Reserve's emergency meeting, which is coming up in the middle of this week on Wednesday. It's essentially moved in front of the July meeting where the Federal Reserve was previously expecting to announce a 50 basis point hike on the prime interest rate. However, the bond market today started pricing in up to a 30 percent chance of a 75 basis point hike. Now, just for some clarity, when the last inflation reading came in, we saw 8.6% year-over-year growth in the CPI for May, which is the highest in the past 40 years. And in the previous Federal Reserve meeting, the Federal Reserve increased the prime interest rate by 50 basis points, which at the time was the highest since the early 2000s. A 75 basis point hike hasn't happened since 1994. So it would be an extreme measure in the Federal Reserve's arsenal to fight inflation and get consumer prices back down. We actually saw the U.S. 10-year Treasury jump to 3.37% today, actually reaching a high of about 3.38%. This is almost like a meme stock chart, but this is the U.S. 10-year Treasury. This is the roughly one decade high that we've seen in the U.S. 10-year. Now, keep in mind when we're seeing the Federal Reserve increasing the prime interest rate, this is also the rates at which the government borrows money. So part of the reason that we see these big sell-offs is twofold. One, it's becoming more expensive for some of the heavily debted tech companies and other non-profitable companies to continue borrowing and funding future growth. Two, it also means that typically inflation is high, which means that consumer spending is down, and that equates to roughly 70% of the overall U.S. GDP. But also, that means that the U.S. government is having to borrow at these much higher rates when treasuries jump up as a result of having higher prime rates. And that ultimately means that debt servicing gets extremely expensive for the government, which means that we may see higher tax rates in the future. So there are a lot of things riding on these large increases in the prime rate. Again, we haven't seen a projected rate increase of 75 basis points since 1994. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out in the market over the coming days. There's only a 30% chance priced in right now with the bond market. So that means if we do in fact see a 75 basis point hike at this emergency Federal Reserve meeting, I would expect to see the market to continue to sell off. However, if they announce that, if they announce that this is going to happen more in the July meeting or in later meetings throughout the year and that they keep it at 50 basis points for now, we could see a bit of a rally back in the stock market to give back a little bit of the losses that they had today as a result of starting to see that 75 basis point hike priced in. Carnage is the only thing I can use to describe the Bitcoin price action that we've seen today and all across crypto land. We've now seen Bitcoin tumble below the $22,000 lows that we saw during the U.S. trading day. In fact, as I'm making this video, we're seeing Bitcoin continue its tumble down to about $21,000 and Ethereum is now down to almost $1,100, which is absolutely insane. We're starting to see a ton of forced liquidations in crypto land. As we know, lenders are lending up to 90% on positions, meaning that people only have potentially 10% of the actual funds within their portfolio in cash. And so when we see 
crypto start to pull back as we're seeing right now it becomes a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy with margin calls happening which causes even more collapse so we're seeing this in live action with bitcoin now down to 21,500 and micro strategy one of the largest holders of bitcoins was down over 25 percent today now down over 70 percent on the year back in march they held almost 130,000 bitcoin with a notional value of about 5.9 billion dollars and they have gone on record as recently as may saying that they could come into a potential margin call at about bitcoin 21,000, which we're almost there and that's left michael saylor the ceo sweating over the past couple of days now it appears that he's trying to play it off posting the bitcoin lightning eyes today and saying in bitcoin we trust just a couple of hours ago but in reality we're potentially going to see liquidations coming into play um, or margin calls coming into play. One thing I would like to mention is that micro strategies had gone on record in the past saying that they likely wouldn't see liquidations until about Bitcoin 3000. So we're a long way away from that. But there is still concern that, that if they're not able to meet collateral requirements from their treasury to keep their loan to value at about 50%, that we could start to see some forced liquidations, which again could be more of the self-fulfilling prophecy, sending Bitcoin into a downward spiral. So this is something that we definitely want to keep an eye on as largely the crypto market is still following Bitcoin's price action. And in fact, we're actually seeing a lot of overlap between Bitcoin price action and stock market price action. So as each of these markets continues to fall, we're seeing more and more downward pressure, both in the stock market for liquidations for traders using margin there, as well as liquidations going on in the crypto market. And adding even more to the downward pressure in crypto land, we saw Celsius freeze withdrawals on client accounts. Now, Celsius is one of the largest crypto lenders in the entire market, managing over $11 billion in assets. And the way that Celsius works is essentially you're depositing other crypto within Celsius. That's being relent out by them. They're earning a spread on that and paying you an annual percentage rate of about 18.6%. Now, naturally, 18.6% is not feasible without new client assets coming in. So when we started to see this sell-off, we stopped seeing as many new client assets coming in that ultimately caused them to run into liquidity issues. There's all kinds of speculation out there about whether or not Celsius is going to allow withdrawals to continue in the future, but we've seen Celsius token take an absolute nosedive from $8 all the way down to 26 as of the time of making this video, 26 cents that is. Uh, so an absolute obliteration of Celsius coin there. Now, again, there's speculation that Celsius just had a short-term liquidity issue, and as more client assets enter, they'll be able to allow withdrawals for people who have been looking to make withdrawals and have already placed those orders. But again, just seeing these sorts of happenings within the market has caused a lot of people to pause on placing new assets within the crypto market which as I just mentioned, essentially causes the continued sell off So I don't think that we're gonna see any major rebounds in the next couple of weeks. In fact, I would bet more on seeing continued downside as more continued forced liquidations happen and as more people are concerned about whether or not to continue placing money in some of these assets. Now that's on the crypto side of things. On the stock market side of things, I think we really won't know which way the market's going to go until after the Federal Reserve meeting and where we see the Federal Reserve heading with interest rates, whether they increase them by 75 points just in this meeting alone, or whether they hold back, do a 50 point increase and mention the potential for 75 basis point increases in the future. The market's already started to price in, potentially having a 75 basis point increase. So if we don't see that again, I think we see the market rally just a bit. But if we do see the 75 basis point increase, since it's not fully priced in by the bond market, I think that we see the stock market price that in just a bit more with a bit more downside. But Lena, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Are you going to wait until the Federal Reserve meeting to make any more trades or are you continuing to buy this juicy dip? Also, let me know if you like the new video style down in the comments below. I'm looking to make this a daily video covering a lot more topics than I have in the past. So I'd really appreciate some feedback there. Thanks for stopping by. Catch you in the next one.